morning, the title of this message is, What is in your hand? What's in your hand? So inside of every person, there's a God-given gift and a God-given calling, but not everybody discovers that. Everybody has a special grace from God. And when people operate in their gift, they have a sense of fulfillment in their life. And many people go through life and they never find their destiny, never find out their gift and, uh, and the place that God has for them. But whenever you find your gift and your calling, then God's grace kicks in. And God's grace is not just forgiveness of sin, but it's also divine ability to do what you cannot do on your own. And so we're limited sometimes in our ability, but when God's grace kicks in, he gives us the ability to do the things that we need to do. And so 1 Peter 4.10 says, As each one has received a special gift, employed in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And so a lot of folks have a gift, but yet they never find it and, and step into that place. And Moses was called to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt, but we know that he killed an Egyptian and he ended up tending sheep in the desert for 40 years. And, and so his dreams were dashed. And he didn't, you know, didn't think he would ever make it back to Egypt. Then one day he turned aside to see a burning bush. And he had an encounter with God. And he felt inadequate. But God told him to uh, deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then this is what he said to God in Exodus 4 verse 1. What if they will not believe me or listen to what I say? For they may say, the Lord has not appeared to you. And the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And so many people see a need, but they don't think that they have what they need to fulfill that need. And so God told Moses to look at what he had, what he has in his hand. And, and so you use what you have to meet the needs that you see. Amen. And the, the key to miracles is just letting God use what you already have. And so many folks are looking for something outside of them, and they don't realize that God's given them gifts and talents and given them resources to meet the needs that are around them. And so when God asked Moses what was in his hand, he said, just a staff. And so a staff is used to tend sheep, and it was not a weapon of war, and it wasn't something that you could use to deliver the children of Israel in the natural. But God used that staff, and with it, Moses performed miracles. We know that he turned the Nile River into blood with that staff and, and that he uh, brought plagues upon Egypt with that staff, that he parted the Red Sea with that staff. He got water out of a rock with that same staff. And so with Moses, it, it was a staff. With King David, it was a slingshot. With Samson, it was the jawbone of an ass. It was something simple, but something that they already had that God used to, for, to perform miracles in their world. Amen. And so, we think that we need something we don't already have. Come on, we, we need something outside of us. And if I had this special gift, and, and if I had that talent, then God could use me. And we don't realize that God's already given us talents. And, and we all make up the body of Christ. Yeah. Come on, there are many, many, many different gifts, many different talents. I'm not a real good singer. Yeah. You know, my voice is, has never been trained. And, oh. and so if I led worship, you might be discouraged. <laughs> but yet God's given me other gifts that I could use. And, and so, you know, you may not have a pulpit ministry, not, may not be a singer, a preacher, or a teacher, but there's so many ways that God can use you. And there's so many other needs in the church that have to be filled. Come on, it's not just about, you know, a worship team or a preacher, but many, many other needs that have to be, full, have to be filled. And so God can use you to meet those needs. And so God takes our limited abilities whenever we give those abilities to Him, and He multiplies those abilities. Amen? As I taught in the offering, that what you give to God comes back multiplied. And so that's in finances, but it's also in our talents and abilities. And, and as we step out and just use what we have, then God increases that gift. I started out teaching children's Sunday school class. And, you know, and, and at that time I thought, well, that would be a challenge, you know. And, and I stepped out, didn't really feel that capable of just teaching the children's Sunday school class. This is when I was probably 25 or something like that. And, and uh, I began to do that. Then it became easy. And then I, you know, then I taught youth. And I, you know, I taught in nursing homes. And, and that was a challenge. Led a home group. I thought that was a, 
was a big deal. But as I began to use my gift, then God increased that gift. But you know, it takes steps of faith. Come on, and if you haven't done something before, it takes a step of faith yeah. to reach out and do it. Yeah. And you know, for many folks, it's really a, a challenge to get up in front of an audience, a group of people, and, and say something. Because they say the fear of public speaking is like the second fear behind the fear of death. The second greatest fear wow. is the fear of public speaking. And, and so it's something that you can get over, though. Amen. You know, if you get up and you make a fool of yourself several times then you get over it. You don't, it doesn't really bother you as much as it used to. But I mean, I used to have the fear of public speaking. But, I, you know, I got over that. I would say probably the first ten times I preached, I got up there and I was just terrified, you know, and, and uh, was, you know, thinking I'm going to make a terrible mistake. And, and the truth is you'll make mistakes, come on, but they're not as big a deal as you think they are. And so God, we give our abilities to God, and God increases those abilities. And so God stretches us just a little bit at a time. But the key to reaching your goal and destination is to stretch in the place that you are. Come on, step out and try to do something maybe that you've never done before or something that you think would be a challenge. And when you step out and you begin to do that, you find out that you can do more than you thought you could do. Amen? And so God's grace kicks in, and he enables you to do that. And we often think that, that God can, uh, can only use us in a big way. And you know, and I've said this before, that you'll never do something big for God until you do something small for God. Come on, you start out with a small, and, and then God increases you. And, and so Jesus told the parable of the talents, and, and those who use their talents were given even more talents. And the one who didn't use his talent, because of fear, he lost even what he had. Yeah. And so it's the fear of failure that holds people back. And they say, well, what if I fail? And like my dad said, you've already failed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like the leper said in, in the Old Testament, why sit we here till we die? Yeah. You've already failed. And so you step out and you do something that... That is maybe unfamiliar, unknown, and, and you know, God just tells you to take a step, and you have to trust Him in faith. Amen. You don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but you do it, and you find out that God provides the way. Amen? Amen. It's just using what you have. And so God likes to take small things and do big things with them. You know, the Apostle Paul said God doesn't use the mighty you know, or the eloquent or the, the highly educated, but God often <laughs> uses Come on, just common people so that he can get the glory. Because many folks, you know, they'll take the glory. But God likes to use folks where, where people can look at them and say, I know that God calls them to do that. Or it was God working through them because in their own, in their natural ability, they wouldn't be able to do that. Yes. Come on, people can look at you and say, well, God prospered them. I remember when they weren't prosperous. They weren't born into a wealthy family, but God prospered them. Or, I, you know, I remember when they couldn't do the things that they're doing now, but God gave them the ability. And so it's a partnership between you and between God. And so there's a story in the Old Testament when a, when a widow woman told the prophet Elisha that a creditor was going to come and take her two sons if she couldn't pay her debt. And so Elisha asked her, he said, what do you have in your house? And she said, all I have is just a, a pot of oil. And so many times, uh, you know, we think, well, what we have is not enough. And so Elisha had to refocus her attention on what she had. You see, many times we look at what we don't have. And we say, well, I don't have this, and I don't have that, and we'll compare ourselves to other people. And say, you know, maybe I don't have their looks, or I don't have their voice, or I don't have their talent, or, you know, I don't have their finances. And we'll talk about, you know, what we don't have. But, but the prophet had to focus her attention on what she had. Amen? Because God's going to use exactly what you have. That's right. And so he told her, he said, well, go borrow as many vessels as you can find. And so she, she had to do something. Something was required of her. And many times folks think, well, God's going to do a miracle and there will be nothing required of me. But that's not true. Come on, there are things required of you. And the Bible says that faith without works is dead faith. Wow. Yes. 
Come on, if you really believe, then you're going to act. Come on, and so true faith uh, results in action and it results in doing. And when we're really in true faith, man, you know, we, we take action. If it's in the area of finances, then we give. You know, it's not enough just to believe in tithing and giving. You actually have to write out that check or, you know, or, or give. And so many times you don't know, well, I don't know how I can afford to do this or, you know, I don't know how God's going to work, but you just act in faith. Amen. 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 Trusting God and trusting his word. And many times just trusting, you know, whoever's preaching. They're talking about, you know, giving and what the Bible says about giving. Right. And so it, it builds your faith and you take a step of faith and you give and you see God come through. I remember camp meeting last year. And, and you know, we gave, we needed a lot of money that last night to, to make the budget. And so they were taking pledges. And, and so I, I pledged a thousand dollars. And I think I had a thousand dollars in savings that, Actually, I needed for for something else, and and so I, it was from a tax return or something like that. And had it had an earmark for something, but but I gave it sacrificially, and so lo and behold, within the the next few weeks, I had twenty five hundred dollars of unexpected co income come in. And I turned around and gave a thousand of that, and then I had another two thousand of unexpected income come in after that, and I found out that God moved in. A miraculous way that I would have never figured whenever I gave that. And that's, that's the way that God is. You always take the first step. Amen. Come on, because that's faith. And what moves God is faith. It's not just need. If God was moved by need, yeah, then all the needs in the world would, would be yeah. taken care of. Yeah, come on, if he was just moved by need. He's not just moved by need, but he's moved by faith. And yeah. somebody taking him at his word and acting upon his word, come on, that's when the miracle starts. Come on, God can deliver you from drugs and alcohol and, and anything, but something's required of you. you got to act. And some folks, when they find out, hey, I'm going to have to go to church and I'm going to have to put forth some effort and I'm going to have to pray and, you know, and different things are going to be required of me, then, then they just quit or they just give up. Come on, it's just easy to go with the flow. But if you want to live for God, come on, it's going to cost you something. Yeah. What does it cost you? It costs you your, your heart, your time. Everything. Come on, your affections. That's what it costs you. But let me tell you, it pays a lot more than what it costs. Yeah. Praise God. The way of the transgressor is hard. Yeah. And I've lived that life before. Yeah. You know, where, where there was no happiness and no peace and, and no blessings because... God was not first in my life, and I wasn't living for him. I was, I was living for myself. But whenever I began to live for him, there was tremendous sacrifice that I made, but then tremendous blessing followed doing the will of God. Amen? And so you have to decide that, man, I'm going to step forward. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to put him, I'm going to put him first place in my life. So God has a part, and you have a part. The children of, of uh, Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because they were afraid to act on the word of God. God told them that they could go up and possess the land, but they didn't believe it. Come on, they, they were going by what they could see. They were going by the obstacles. They were, they were going by the giants, looking at the giants and the difficulties. And so they were afraid to act, and so they just wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And that's what happens to us whenever we're afraid to act on what God has called us to do. We'll just end up wondering, being dissatisfied, grumbling and complaining, and maybe even blaming God for our situation. And really it's our fault because we we're afraid to act. When God called me into ministry, it was a tremendous step of faith. I had a stable job. My wife had a stable job. And, and uh, I mean, things were good in our life. And so I had to to quit my job and go back to school and and uh, it meant you know some financial sacrifices doing that and then you know I was I was getting a degree in an area where there are no jobs or no paying jobs or very few paying jobs you know there's a lot of jobs in ministry but they don't most of them don't pay you know and so you know they're like volunteer jobs starting out and and so you know I found that when I graduated there weren't a lot of a lot of jobs and the one that you know, the ones that were offered were not in my city. And so I was going to have to sell my house. And the economy was, was totally bad at that time. And it was like an impossibility to sell a house uh, in that area. It was like in 1990. 
and uh, the country was in a recession. And so I wasn't able to sell my house, and I decided I was just going to leave my house. You know, I was just going to leave it there and let them repossess or whatever. That I was ready to go go into ministry and take this job. And and whenever I made that decision, it was two <coughs> two weeks later. Within two weeks, I sold that house, and I just signed the note over to somebody, and he took over the house. And we moved, and we were out of town, and the rest is history. Yeah. But there were tremendous sacrifices every step of the way. When when I went to pastor my first church, I had about eight sermons. You know, I had a sermon on salvation and one on healing and, and one on, you know, the second coming of Christ. And, you know, I had just about eight sermons that, you know, that I could preach. And, and so I went to a church and, and so they did Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. So I had to preach three sermons a week. I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it. But I did it. I used to preach ten minute sermons. And the people loved it. They said, they said, you're our favorite preacher. You know, I have about a 10-minute sermon there. So, you know, I've been able to stretch them out to about, you know, 20 or 30 minutes now. But, uh, but you know, I, it, it took me a while to develop. And, uh, and so I began, but I, took, but I took a step of faith. Amen. When I came here, I took a step of faith. Went from a small church to a, to a bigger church. A church that had a lot more administration was was more a little more complicated. When I was in Beeville, we had a, you know, the, the church had a janitor and a pastor, you know, and then, I mean, we didn't even have a secretary. And so our, our goal was to get a secretary. And so, you know, we didn't really have a church staff. or And so life was very simple. And when I came here, it was a, a little more complicated. And so it, it took a, a step of faith to step out. And so if, if we have faith, then works are going to follow that. Right. Come on, if you believe the Word of God, then you're going to give. Come on, you're going to tell people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're going to share your faith. You're going to pray. You're going to serve. Come on, you're going to act upon your faith. Otherwise, it's just dead faith. Yeah. There are a lot of churches that are full of faith, but they're full of dead faith. Mm -hmm. Come on, people who believe, but they're not taking any action. People who see the miracles are those who take action, who step out in faith. And so one third, one third of the word gospel is go. Come on, many times we want to sit back and let God bring it all to us, but you have to go. Amen? You've got to take action. I, I find out many times when, whenever I pray and there's a need, then God speaks to me and he tells me an action to take. And so there's work required on my part yeah. to receive the blessing and to receive the answer. So God's speaking to me, and he says, well, do this or do that. You know, so there's, there's something that I have to do. Amen? Amen? To be able to receive the blessing. And so Elisha told this lady, he said, go borrow some vessels from your neighbors. He said, and borrow a lot of them. Come on, he had big expectations. Come on, God wanted to bless her and meet her need, but not just in a small way. God is the God of more than enough. Come on, he's El Shaddai, which means... More than enough. Somebody said he's El Shaddai. He's not El Chipo. I found out that God can bless in abundance. Yes, and some, some folks think it's an either or proposition. You know that if, if you give to God. Then you're not going to have much. Or God doesn't want you to have much financially. And it's just small thinking. That, that God doesn't have enough to bless us. And bless other people too. Or God doesn't have enough to bless us. And us be a giver. Listen, the most blessed folks that I know are the biggest givers. Yeah. Come on. And, and many times, you know, somebody will see somebody who's really blessed and say, oh, that's a very selfish person. Hey, you don't know their heart, and you don't know their giving. Okay. And many times, they're, they're big givers. And that's exactly why they're blessed, yeah. because they're big givers. But sometimes folks think, well, you know, I, you know, I can't have anything for myself if I'm going to be a big giver. No, that's, you know, that's not true at all. Come on. As you step out and give in, come on, you give, and God meets your need, but not just enough to meet your need, but in abundance. The Apostle Paul said that God wants you to have enough for yourself and give to every good work. Yeah. That means that you have an abundance. Yeah. You can't really give a lot if you don't have more than you need. Yeah. Come on, and I'm all for living conservative. I'm driving a 10-year-old truck and, and, uh, and a 6- or 7-year-old uh, SUV and... You know, and uh, you know, I'm not somebody that uh, is real flashy, and you know, I don't wear jewelry or 
Uh, you know, I just wear just a common watch, and I'm not, you know, a real flashy type person. That's, that's not important to me. But, uh, but you know, I, you know, I believe in being conservative. But then God can bless us. The Bible says He can do more than we ask or think. Amen. Amen. So God has enough. There's a plenty of money in the world. Did you know that? Plenty of money in the world. For you to be blessed, have your needs supplied in a grand way, and also be a generous giver too. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want to have something here, and then I want to put some in heaven. Amen? Yes. The only thing you're going to keep is what you put in heaven eternally. But if God has built a city of gold for us, come on, he's going to let us have some nice things here. Can you say amen? amen. But we should be a giver. Amen. And so he said, borrow a lot of pots. You see, if she would have just borrowed a few pots, she would have received a small blessing. She would not have had enough to be able to pay the creditor and have her needs supplied. But he said, borrow a lot of pots. Amen? Raise your expectations. Expect God to do something big. Don't expect him just to do something small. And many times we limit God with our expectations. We think, well, yeah. God can only do so much. Yeah. Listen, God can, can give you exactly what you want. Yeah. Come on, exactly what you want. We were, Christian was, uh, she's shopping for a car. And so she, you know, she needs one. And, and so we went shopping, went to Houston, and we looked around. She wanted a certain kind of car, and we looked at a lot of different cars and, and uh, on lots. And, and so lo and behold, I was in Lake Jackson yesterday. And so I looked at a car lot, you know, and I looked at some, took some pictures of cars and sent it there and said, there's a certain kind of car that you really want. And that's down here and, and talked to the salesman about it. So she went down to see it. And so it was the kind of car that she wanted, the exact color, the exact color of the interior. Uh, it had all the features that she wanted on a used car. And uh, it was, you know, just all the specifications that she wanted and the price range that she could afford. And I'm thinking, man, it's like God had it just right there for her, yeah. close, exactly what she wanted, and she bought that car. So praise God. Yeah. She'll be driving it next week. But you know, when she was thinking, well, I'm going to buy an old clunker or, yeah. or something like that, you know, and, and uh, not really what I want, and, you know, I'm just going to have to do that for a while. And, and uh, you know, she was certainly willing to do that. Absolutely. But... God had something better for her. Amen. He didn't, you know, he didn't have just, you know, a piece of junk for you, but he had he had something better for her. And that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. And so our expectations determine what we what we receive. Come on, your expectations determine exactly what you give back. Whenever I give to God, I expect to receive. Some folks say that you shouldn't, but I would be denying the promises of God. And you know, and it's not in a greedy way that I expect to receive. It's just when I when I give, I expect God to, to honor His word. Amen. I don't know exactly. I don't make any demands. God, I want back two times, three times, whatever. You know, I don't make any demands. I just know that that God's going to give back. Amen. Yes. Yeah. And, and and I trust God to give back generously. Yes. I found that God's generous, Thank more generous than most people. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on, he created not just one universe, but thousands of universes. Oh, yeah. Come on, he's a God of abundance. And so we can limit what we receive from God by limiting our expectations. Yeah. And so Elisha told her to, to pour the pot of oil that she had into all those empty vessels. And so she provided the effort, and God provided the miracle. Yeah. She filled all the vessels, she sold the oil, she paid the debt, and then she had a lot left over to meet her own needs. Yeah. Come on, it's no good if you pay all your bills and you don't have any money to live on. <laughs> Come on, but she yeah. paid her bill and she had enough to live on. That's the kind of God that we serve. <laughs> Praise God. There's another story in the Bible that where Jesus was teaching the crowds out in the country and the people were there and thousands of people were there listening to him teach and they were there all day. And so folks, they, you know, they would go to church all day. It reminds me when I was a boy. They used to have uh, dinner on the ground sometimes. Yeah. And so they'd have, they called it dinner on the grounds, preaching all day. And we called it uh, preaching on the grounds and dinner all day. And so they would break for lunch and then they'd have an afternoon service 
and they'd break for dinner and they would have a night service. And so this is back like in the 60s. And so back then, you know, it's like, it like everything was a sin. You know, television, <laughs> movies, no, no mixed swimming. And they even called it bathing back then. And uh, people would ask my dad, what do you think about mixed bathing? He said, oh, I think it's terrible. He said, but I, you know, I think mixed swimming's okay. But, uh, so I mean, everything was a sin. All we could do really was eat and, and play sports. You know, that's about all we could do. And, and Lord, did we eat it. it was because it was the only thing that wasn't a sin. <laughs> and so, I mean, you could eat all you want. You couldn't, you couldn't dance or anything else, but, but, but you could eat. And so they would, they would have that. So they're, so all these folks are, are listening to Jesus teach. And I mean, he's that good of a teacher that people would come and, and listen all day, some, some powerful teaching. And so they, they wanted something to eat. And so the, the disciples told Jesus, they said, you know, we need to feed these people. And Jesus said, well, go ahead and feed them. They said, well, we don't have enough money to buy food for all these people. There's like 5,000 people. And so Jesus said, well, what food is there? How much food do you have? And so they found the little boy who had a lunch. And so he had five little loaves of bread and had two fishes. And so they talked that little boy and given his lunch to them. Yeah. And somebody said, well, the, the miracle was, was not in Jesus multiplying the food, but in the little boy giving away his lunch. Yeah. And I'm sure it's hard for to get a boy to give away his lunch. Well, he gave him his lunch, and they took it to Jesus. Jesus said, what do you have? And so Jesus took that, that food, and he blessed it, and he began to pass it out, and the food began to multiply. Wow. Yeah. And they just kept passing it out until all 5,000 people were fed, and there were 12 baskets left over. Amen. Can you imagine that little boy taking that food home? Yeah. You know, and his mama asking, where'd you get all that food? He said, man, I just... I gave my lust to Jesus and I got all this food. That's the way, that's the way that God works. And that's the way that he blesses. He started with just a little boy's lunch. And, and, uh, and so he, Jesus fed 5,000 people. But the miracle happened because they used what they had. Come on, they used what they had. And they started with what they had. And as they used what they had, God multiplied it and he blessed it. And so nobody here is by accident, and, and God has a, a unique purpose for you. It's not an accident that you're here, that you're here in this church. And, and so many folks want to do something great for God, but they haven't responded to the needs that are around them. Yeah. How do we do something great for God? We see needs around us, and we begin to fill those needs. Success is finding a need and filling that need, and that brings success. And and I heard a story about a man who, who sang in a church choir. And so he noticed he could never keep his bookmarks in his hymnal. And so he, he wanted to do something about it. And so he, he uh, invented post-it notes and became wealthy because he saw a need and he filled it. Well, the same thing is true in our life that there's needs all around us. And as we step out and as we begin to, to meet those needs, Come on, God begins to multiply, and he begins to use us. And many folks think, well, you know, if I could be a missionary somewhere, you know, if God had sent me to some foreign country, he could really use me in a mighty way. Listen, God can use you right here in West Columbia, Texas. Come on, he may send you to your neighbor. And until you go to your neighbor, you probably never go overseas. Amen? God wants to use you right where you are in West Columbia, Texas. And the truth is that the, there's enough people and resources in this church to reach our community and have an impact upon the world. Amen. Sitting right here in the pews. So much potential, but potential that's not being used and not being released. Mm -hmm. And what we have to ask God is, God, how do you want to use me? What needs are around me that you can, that you can use me to fill? Come on, God puts us in, in places for a specific reason. I'm amazed at how many people I run into just, you know, in town and different places and, and ran into them uh, through divine connection, no doubt, that God put us together so that I'd be able to minister to them. And that's, you know, and that's the way that God uses us. I can say here in our church that, you know, there's so many different needs. We need ushers and greeters on Sunday mornings. 
Come on, we need children's ministry teachers on Sundays and, and on Wednesday nights. We need intercessors here on Wednesday nights who will join with us. And we have a time of prayer and, and also a time of teaching so that you can be fed. We need home group leaders. I started out just leading the home group. And it was a small group. It was real small, just me and my wife. And uh, it started out that small, but then we had other folks come in too. It was a challenge leading a small group, but I started where I was, and then folks were ministered to just by opening up our home and, and doing a Bible study. And so there's so many different areas of need in our church. And let me ask you to look around you and see an area of need and step in and fill that need. Because God's not just looking for spectators. Come on, he's looking for participators. Amen. And people who will use their gifts and talents to meet the needs around them. And you'll find out as you begin to do something simple, just something simple, then God will use you to do greater things. And I've always said that there, you know, there's, I don't, I don't consider anything in this church, any task in this church too small for me to do. Whether it's turning on the air conditioner or greeting a, a guest that's here or picking up trash in the parking lot or spraying weeds or, or whatever it is, I don't consider anything beneath me. Amen? And so there's needs around us, and God can use us to fill those needs. When I was first a senior pastor, many times folks would come up to me, and they would say, Pastor, so-and-so, uh, this needs to be done in the church. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, a lot of folks, you know, they would say that. Then I got smart after a while, there's this one lady always telling me what well, needs to be done. And I'd say, well, you're appointed to do that. And you know what? <laughs> she started telling me. She, she stopped telling me. Everything that needs to be done. And, uh, and I'd say, well, would you do that? And, uh, and some folks, you know, they think everybody else should do something. Yeah. You know, and they'll look at some rich person and say, well, they should ought to give all their money to the poor. Yeah. And I'd say, well, you know, how much do you give to the poor? You know, and many folks, that you know, they, they look at, at other folks and say, well, they ought to do this. But, you know, God's called us to give and to serve. And nothing is beneath us or below us, and, yeah. and everything is important that God has called us to do. And so I just want to just give an invitation this morning, but if you'll say that I'm just going to, I'm going to step out and use the gifts and talents that God has given me, I just want you to raise your hand this morning, and say, I'm just going to do what God, you know, what God, use the talents that God has given me. It may just be greeting guests who come here, or serving in, in children's ministry, or you know, whatever it may be, coming, just coming on Wednesday night and praying. If you can pray and you can come, you can have an impact upon this church Amen. and the world by being an intercessor Amen. and joining with us. But stepping out and doing what you can do, not sitting back and waiting. You know, someday I'm going to wait for some, some great commission from God. But I'm going to step out and do what needs to be done right now. Let's stand to our feet. I'm just going to pray a prayer and then we're just going to end and worship today but father we just thank you for your word today and i thank you for all the the great folks that are here and all the ministry gifts that are represented by them and and father i pray that we'll see needs around us those who need to hear about christ those who need to be comforted those who need to be ministered to and father i pray that each and every person would step out and begin to fulfill those needs in this church and in the community and in the entire world and Father, I thank you right now that as we step out, that an army will be mobilized and will make an impact upon our community and the world in 2016.